and former residents of Fukushima Prefecture are still living away from their homes nearly five years after the nuclear accident. Three municipalities are expecting the lifting of evacuation orders for their residents by the spring of this year. But whether many of them will return is unclear due to fears of radiation and unstable livelihoods. In the case of Naraha town, where the evacuation order was lifted last September, only 5% of residents have so far returned. They cite radiation fears, insufficient medical services and other reasons. The construction of intermediate storage facilities for contaminated soil and other waste is crucial, but less than 1% of landowners have signed land sales contracts. This year marks fifth anniversary of the massive earthquake and tsunami which triggered a major accident at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The man in charge of decommissioning the plant says this year is going to be important for the work. Now Hiro Masuda is the president of the company responsible for the process. Removing the molten fuel is our final goal. It's very important to find where it is. If this can be done, this year will be one of great progress. Masuda notes he must decide how to remove the fuel. One method is to fill the reactor containment vessels with water before extraction to shield workers from the intense radiation. Experts believe some of the fuel penetrated the reactor cores and is sitting at the bottom of the containment vessels. As early as next month, the company is planning to bring in a remote-controlled robot that can withstand extremely high radiation levels to capture images of the fuel at the two of the three crippled reactors. In his first news conference of the year, Japan's Prime Minister has expressed his resolve to tackle the challenges facing his country. Shinzo Abe said he wants to advance his agenda when he hosts the summit of the Group of Seven Nations in May. Freedom, democracy, rule of law, human rights, these are universal values, and G7 countries are the champion of these values. As the host nation, I hoped to lead the world as we strive for peace and prosperity of the region and the world by looking towards the future with a global perspective and setting the most appropriate path. 
Abe said the fight against terrorism and the situation in the Asia-Pacific are among the issues he hoped to take up at the summit. He also spoke about strengthening Japan's economy. We'll tackle head-on the long-standing issue of our aging society with fewer children. We have set three targets, raising Japan's GDP to 600 trillion yen, a post-war high, increasing the birth rate to 1.8 children per woman, and making sure no one needs to quit work to nurse elderly relatives. We'll shoot three arrows towards those targets. We'll start trying to create a society in which all play an active role. Abe referred to the upper house election scheduled for the summer. He said the coalition of his Liberal Democratic Party and its partner Komeito will seek to secure its majority in the chamber. As we heard Prime Minister Abe say in his speech earlier, the Group of Seven Summit will be held in Japan this May on an island famous for its beauty. I met the governor of the prefecture hosting the event and asked him what sort of message he would like to share with the world as all eyes turn to Japan. The summit's venue is Kashikoshima Island in Shima City, Mie Prefecture. The island is located in Ago Bay, known for its beautiful coastline. The area is famous for its rich sea resources, pearls, and for a traditional style of fishing by female divers called ama. The leaders will gather here on May 26 and 27. We went to Kashikoshima Island to interview Mie Governor A.K. Suzuki about the upcoming event. How has the local atmosphere changed since the summit venue was announced? I can feel heightened interest and expectations. More than 1,000 applications have been filed for some 200 foreign language volunteer positions. Mie Prefecture is home to Issei, one of Japan's most famous shrines. Iga City is the birthplace of ninja. The prefecture is rich in Japanese culture and tradition, while also being a hub for cutting-edge technology. Some parts for the first Japanese-made passenger jet in half a century were manufactured in Mie. The jet made a successful maiden flight in November. Governor Suzuki expects the summit to help publicize these attractions to the world. We want to advertise what we can offer, not just during the summit, which lasts only two days, but also before and after. Our focus has been tours for foreign journalists. Reporters from 22 countries have so far taken part. Those tours offer opportunities to experience something unique to our prefecture. For instance, the journalists wore ninja outfits, ate lobsters and abalones, and chatted with Ama, the female divers. To boost the economy after the summit, we should continue to actively encourage foreign visitors to come and international conferences to be held in our prefecture. We want to create the necessary human resources in both the government and private sectors. Security is one of the main concerns. Police and Coast Guard officials are running through training scenarios in the lead-up to the summit. The governor thinks the cooperation of local people is also vital. Residents will be the first to detect suspicious developments because they know the local area. Until the recent terrorist attacks in Paris, local people didn't really understand terrorism. The attacks were a turning point. The assaults on the theater and the bar in Paris have made them realize that terrorists hit soft targets. They have become increasingly cooperative in helping to keep their communities safe. They are making specific proposals, such as suggesting places to install surveillance cameras or street lights. I believe residents' security awareness has been increasing. What message do you want to send from Mie Prefecture at the summit? 
まあ、まさにこの伊勢神宮とかが日本のね、えー、日本人の心のふるさとであります伊勢 shrine is one of the spiritual homes of the Japanese. That spirituality, I believe, can bring world peace. This spirit transcends barriers between religious sects, races, and generations, and accepts diversity. Getting tough on the Islamic State extremist group is important, but if everyone transcends differences in religion, race, generation, and gender, We believe we will get closer to peace. That will be our message to the world. Mie and Isashima are remarkable places to visit. By all means, please visit here. We are waiting for your visit. Young people who were forced to flee their hometown near the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant in 2011 have attended a coming of age ceremony. 63 new adults who used to live in Futaba town attended Sunday ceremony in Iwaki city. Many of the town's residents evacuated to Iwaki. Futaba's mayor handed them certificates and asked them to work for the reconstruction of their hometown. When the Fukushima disaster happened, I was helped by the defense forces. So I decided to become a member. I hope to be an adult who appreciates people who helped us through the disaster. And I want to be there to help people when some other disaster happens in the future. For some of the participants, it was their first reunion since the disaster.